Hello, my name is Tracy Holly. I'm a mental health survivor educator and I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Alan Farmer, a consultant psychiatrist. Hello and welcome. Hello. From your perspective, what do you see as causing or contributing to mental distress? I don't think we understand it fully at the moment, but I think it is a complex interaction between our genes and our environment. We do know that um, certain mental disorders do cluster in, in families, um, but also we know that, that all mental disorders are more common within, uh, within inner city, within inner city living. Um, and also various mental disorders are also so, so associated with particular life events or long periods of, of stress. Um, and the other thing is that this is superimposed, these sort of risk factors or sometimes protective factors are superimposed on different phases of, of, our, of our lives. Um, the, the highest peak for mental illnesses uh, occurs during adolescence and this occurs during a, a, a time of, of great biological and social uh, upheaval in the adolescent's life. It's also the the, um, the time when they're most likely to be using drugs and somehow this sort of combination of genetic makeup previous experiences, the environment they find themselves self, selves in, just seems to interact at, at these particular times in life. So we've got this massive peak at adolescence for, for things like anxiety disorders, um, psychosis, mood dis, dis, disorders. We see another peak in terms of mood dis, 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 disorders in the late 30s, early 40s. And then obviously in, as, as people start to get quite a bit old, older we see some of the, the some of the psychiatric problems and psychological problems associated more with old with old age i think one of the things that i'm most interested in is the fact that a lot of the experiences which people have um, which are often thought to be part of a psychiatric illness are in fact part of of our experience of everyday life. I was going to say, is it just part and parcel of being a human being? You know, part of the human condition. It is. I think that um, that uh, psychotic experiences are very, very common in adolescence, and studies have shown that around about a quarter of all ad 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 adolescents can recall a non-drug related uh, hallucination or or delusion at some at some some stage. Um, I think we're all aware of uh, anxiety states, fluctuations in our moods. Some days we're high, some days we're low. Some weeks we're high, some weeks we're low. I, th I think we all have our own, our own rhythms. And the question I often ask is sort of, well, what, what has happened, or what is it about this person's predisposition which means that what they're experiencing as part of their everyday life or as their social or psychological development, what actually is making this get stuck? What is actually making this clinically relevant? Because what happens is that some people can get trapped in a sort of a vicious circle of stress, of depression, of paranoia. And there have been some studies which show that sort of these persistent states um, do actually cause some brain changes. So chronic stress will cause the brain brain changes that we recognise from depre depressive ills. Um, the problem is is that is that chronic stress will also sometimes cause the the more the, the chemical imbalance that we sometimes associate with psychosis. And is that irreversible? Or? Most of the time, very reversible. Um, being unwell is not good for your brain, very much like being unwell is not good for your body. Most of us make a full recovery from most of the, of the physical problems that we go through, very much like most people make a very full recovery from the psychiatric or the psychological problems that they go through. There are sort of certain risk factors which have been identified um, being elderly 
and depressed actually leads to an increased rate of dementia and also an increased rate of physical health pro problems. And we also know that repeated episodes of schizophrenia type psychosis or repeated episode of mania uh, does sort of overload your brain systems a bit and you get what's called sort of down regulation that if you get if your brain is constantly flooded by very high levels of, of brain chemicals it'll become less sensitive to them right so uh, whilst most people do make a complete recovery we're not in the business of leaving people unnecessarily suffering for for, for too long a time. Uh, as far as the cause of mental distress, I mean, for the more common experiences like depression and anxiety, do, are there different uh, factors causing that than there are for those causing the more unusual experiences, for example, hearing voices? Mm. The causes can be very non-specific that um, the, the links between stress and depression have also been found between stress and schizophrenia. Um, the links between uh, inner city living and schizophrenia have also been found with inner city living and uh, depression and, and manic depression. So a lot of these problems do come from, uh, from common sources really. And I guess the mystery is sort of where they sort of veer off in one direction rather than than the other. Um, part of that may be to do with the way that our brains are, are hardwired. We know that um, the, we tend to fall into different cat categories in, in in terms of things like the way that the brain deals with with stress. Um, some people's brains operate at 100% when they're sort of doing a job calmly. The problem is when the stress level increases, their performance drop drops off. I'm one of those people who functions very, very poorly with low levels of stress. I'm somebody who always leaves it to the last minute. Mm -hmm. So I actually need quite a bit of stress to get me working to my, to my, uh, my optimum level. That sounds like me, actually. At my optimum <laughs> level, yes. Also, I think that once people are experiencing some of these some of the stranger experiences that we often that we often feel there may be a problem in terms of recognizing them or seeking help or feeling or being willing to talk to people about them i think we we sometimes well we, we, i imagine that we would find it easier to talk to a friend or a relative about feeling anxious and depressed rather than starting to hear to, to hear voices so the very nature of the more severe mental illnesses, I, th I think, do sort of cut you off from some of, your, some of those support systems which, which probably are, are ready and waiting to, uh, to help you.